What's up everyone, Jeremy here from MTG Headquarters, and I has a box of Battle for Zendikar. Uh, this is the box from the Lucky Mystery Box that I showed you guys maybe a week or two ago. What is it, two weeks ago? Uh, from Ideal A to Wait. I don't have the finances to be buying lots of crazy old booster boxes, so I definitely had to hold this one and hope to open it with you guys. I think we will go just the sauce on this box. As basically everyone knows the set. And um, we'll see if we can't get there. It's uh, basically <laughs> um, Gideon or Bust on these boxes. But, you know, there's still some, definitely some good cards. Uh, that we can find. I definitely want to double check, make sure I get you guys the most recent pricing. So Gideon's close to $40. I mean, uh, some idiot said he would be $5. I still think he's ripe for a dual deck reprint. Uh, could you just imagine dual decks, uh, Gideon versus Jace? MSRP 1999 retail price $140. <laughs> uh, we've got Gideon at close to 40. Uh, Ulamog close to 30. Drana is about 16. Avnixla is 16. Kiora is 15. Um, these are all foil prices, by the way. Uh, let me go to non foil. Sorry about that. Uh, non foil Gideon's 32. Ulamog's 13. Drana's nine, um, Omnixilis eight, Kiora five. So there's not a lot of value left in this set, but it's still fun to open. It's still fun to chase that Gideon. So let's do it. We have a forest foil feral thicket and a painful truths. Painful truths is a card that I felt like would see more play than it does, but I understand why it doesn't. We have an island or an reef hydra. Coastal discovery, one of the best uncommons in the set. Uh, definitely one of the better blue cards, one of the better, you know, easy, I think, windmill slam first pick. Zada. I think people had higher expectations for Zada. And he may still achieve them in some form. There we go, an Obnixilis. Five mana for a five loyalty planeswalker with drain, uh, draw a card, lose a life, minus two, destroy target creature. And then you can emblem whenever an opponent draws a card, you lose two life. The opponent gets that. That emblem doesn't seem that, oh shoot. That emblem does not seem that great. I don't know, could be wrong. Part of the Water Veil. Our first, our second, oh, that's actually back-to-back -back Mythic, so that's pretty good. Um, they always put those take an extra cards, take an extra turn at Mythic, and it's always a million mana. It feels like a cop-out. I mean, how many times can you print that card? I don't know. It feels like a waste of a Mythic slot to me. Beast Collar Savant. I had high hope for that high hopes for that card um, when I saw it spoiled. And I still think it will be a great card. Corum Hellkite. 
Somebody told me that they thought that was the worst one of the cycle. Um, no, I think they said the black. They thought the black one was the worst and that this one was like second. I mean, it's a, it's a bad, as you guys know, an octopus token. We have a foil <laughs> converge elf. And a lumbering falls. These uh, vile aggregate first pickable uncommon. Uh, first pickable uncommon, I think. It's very good. Well, it's first pickable in pack one anyway. Hold on a second. Oh, <laughs> well, it's still really good. A foil sunken hollow. That's really good. I was like, uh, I don't want to freak out if this is an expo, but a foil sunken hollow is still a really good, uh, really good for your foil rare. And we have a shrine of the forsaken gods. Foil sunken hollow seems good. I don't know what its value is. It's probably maybe around 10 bucks. I don't know. I've not, uh, in all my drafting, I've only opened Felder Sovereign, a reprint that nobody wanted. Um, I opened an Expedition online, and because they're not letting you trade them in, it's so sad. Expedition Godless Shrine on MTGO, five bucks. I didn't sell it. In fact, I also drafted it. Angelic Captain, fine, but I'd rather see that in pack three. Drana's Emissary is pretty good. I'd rather see Angelic Captain in pack three. Um, you can't really take it pack one, I don't think. It seems really crazy. It's not that good. Smothering Abomination. This thing works great in the green black sack deck. Uh, in terms of draft, I mean, it's still a 4 3 flyer for four, which is good. Um, but if you have a bunch of scions, it's very good. But you still have to sack your scions then, maybe when you don't want to, you know? Swamp Dust Stalker, very good. Three toughness makes it not so good. I'd rather take Ruination Guide probably. And that's just speaking from a pack one, pick one aspect. Back to back dust stalkers. Well, if these were your packs and you took a dust stalker and you had two of them in your deck, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you would have if you would have taken the plunge and, and first picked a dust stalker, having two of them are, seems pretty pretty good. And then you just grab every red, black, colorless card you can. A Kiora. Dueling Planeswalkers, will we also get the Gideon to complete the Holy Trinity? Well, I won't say Holy Trinity. I don't want to offend anybody. The Walker Trinity. Kiora's good, though. I did pass her in draft the other day. I can't remember if I was streaming or not, but... She's not worth nearly as much online, and she just did not go on my deck. Omnath. That's another back-to-back -back mythic. Two back-to-back -back mythic scenarios. It's pretty good. Bloodbond Blood Bond Vampire is pretty gross, too. as an uncommon in the white-black life gain deck. It's the piece you really want. It really puts it over the top. The Bucket Island. And a Cinder Glade. Fine. Adverse Conditions, very good, too. And Vile Aggregate in that same pack. Two very good Devoid cards. I honestly think Devoid is one of the strongest archetypes. Grixis is probably the best. We have a Foil Brilliant Spectrum. And a Quarantine Field. That's uh, three out of the last four pulls were all Mythic. There have been quite a few Mythics in this box. I think that is... Do I have five Mythics? Two Planeswalkers? 
I have four or five mythics with like 15 packs to go, which means probably not going to see any more mythics, but that's okay. Jarner of Hope. Rolling Thunder, I think, is overrated. I think people thought originally that it was like so good and like easily first pickable in draft, but I don't think so. I don't like it that much. Maybe in the Landfall deck, but it seems like every time you cast it, it's like, you know, maybe three, maybe four damage. Not that that's not good, but you're taking your whole turn to do three damage or four damage. Now, if it's to their face, Fathom Feeder, if it's to their face and it wins you the game, you remember that. Whoa, Grip of Desolation. I'd take Grip of Desolation over Rolling Thunder every day and twice on Sunday. But it just feels like, I mean, I guess, I'm, I guess I'm, against a bunch of one toughness stuff, I mean, sure. But I think you really want to be dominant with it if you can. Scatter to the Winds. That's a card that will probably go up in value after rotation, right? Maybe not, though, because this set is getting opened into Oblivion, which is what we all knew would happen. We have a foil Zillaport Cutthroat. That might be something people want. And a From Beyond. Very good. Turned against. Pretty gross, too. I've been real slow to, like, kind of adopt this draft format and get better at it but I think I'm finally turning the corner it's been a lot of losing Lantern Scout I think early on I was taking too many like I mean Breaker of Armies is good I mean I wouldn't fault someone for first picking it but I would have too many just big creatures and I would just lose early to giant fatties which always felt bad March from the Tomb. We find ourselves a foil retreat to Coral Helm. That's worth some bucks. In terms of, like, retreats. Here's a 1010 Eldrazi token. Serpentine Spike card stinks, in my opinion, for draft. Too expensive. For seven mana, I'd much rather just cast like an Eldrazi. And that's my opinion, though. I'm not a pro. But if I'm paying seven mana at sorcery speed, I want to cast a threat. Not remove, possibly. Like, it's so... I mean, they have to have three... There has to be three targets. Here's our Gideon Emblem. Shambling Vent. What are people saying about these lands? Are people holding on to them? Uh... For the long haul, anyway, yeah, seven mana. I think I'd much rather cast a big creature, a foil swamp, Nissa's renewal to go get those lands. But anyway, yeah, devoid. I think is. Real strong. I mean, obviously, allies is really good too. I mean, I had good luck. I've had good luck with even like a halfway there allies deck because the synergy is the best. Non foil sunken hollow. But that's just my opinion. It's not like I win every draft I'm in, so definitely open to being wrong. Ally Encampment. Love blowing that up with uh, Grip of Desolation. Only second to blowing up a creature and an Awakened Land. A creature and an Awakened Land feels so good. It's like, it feels like a three for one, right? Canopy Vista. We are in, you know, I was wondering earlier when we were opening all those mythics, I was like thinking to myself, where are all the rare lands? Because that seems like in draft, that's literally all I open.
Defiant Bloodlord. This is the top end of the white black life gain deck. Tarju Warcaller can be, you know, two copies of that can be enough of a reason to play green. In my opinion. Brutal Expulsion. Pretty good card. All right, three pack, four packs left. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I know it's just kind of, it's just a staple of my channel, you know, from the sauce, or just the sauce. Here's an aligned Hedron network. But a lot of people like these, just get to the point, you know. But I find myself not liking them as much, especially because I don't have infinite boxes anymore. Um, but I still like to provide, I want to try to cater to as many of you all as I can. <clears throat> A Blight Herder. Okay, rare. Bane is probably better. Patreon's coming along nice. We're very close to unlocking standard videos, which is amazing. You may have noticed my custom John Avon playmat. There's probably none left by now, but if there is, there'll be a link in the description to get your very own. Conduit of Ruin. Pretty good. Stasis Snare is also pretty good. All right, last pack. Hey, if you guys want to see the content get more diverse, uh, the Patreon, which we do giveaways for every month, is very close. Um, maybe five or six backers away from unlocking standard videos and maybe just a few more from actually unlocking constructed popper videos. So um, if that's something you'd want to see, maybe go check that out. If you can't support, obviously that's totally fine. I hope you still enjoy the videos just as helpful when you like or just comment down below. All right, our last rare coming up. Ugin's Insight. Snorgasm. Um, let's go through these. Notables, pretty so-so box. I mean, Sunken Hollow. All these like two and three dollar lands, they add up. Omnath, I don't think he's worth anything. Cure is up there. Not, you know, at the top. Like I said, these boxes are like Gideon or Bust. Foil Sunken Hollow, Lumbering Falls. It's okay. Obnixilis, we started out all right. It's an average to poor box, but uh, still pretty good. And it's never a bad box when I get to hang out with all of you. Please keep commenting down below. I do read all of them. And uh, I hope that you guys are having fun. I've got to hang, uh, get off this so I can finish editing and get on stream by 7 o'clock tonight. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and we'll talk to you again real soon. What's up and thanks for watching this video. I produce all different kinds of content. So if you haven't yet, click on my face to subscribe. If you want to watch more videos, I've got some sweet playlists, including this one where I open up every fat pack ever created. I've also got this one over here where I open just about anything vintage and old and expensive for your enjoyment. And all this is made possible by the awesome backers at our Patreon, which is linked in the description of every video. Hop on over there, check it out, see if it's something you might want to consider. If not, sit back, enjoy, and I'll still love you.